recording. Hi. We are recording. Welcome back. Your sister's here. You guys are being held in love. Good, good. I'm going to step away for a minute. <laughs> yeah. The pastor. Okay. Makes me think of footprints in the sand. There you go. I'm being carried this morning. Big time. We need that. Yeah, some wind beneath your wings. Can you see Skylar waving from the beach? Not yet. I can see the corner of a tent. And a pail. <laughs> so I'll, I'll wave back either way, though. This guy came to me and I thought he was going to hit I did the same turn, I backed in, parallel park, and it came to the dirtiest look. <laughs> Good 
be back in a little bit, Beth. Oh, 
Welcome to Science Peace. Uh, we will be starting uh, about when we're scheduled to do so. I just want to invite you, if you'd like to sing, uh, the hymns are in the red hymnal. You're welcome to do that. Uh, if you need a restroom or anything, uh, it is straight back from the glass doors. Welcome to Science Peace.
I'd like to join in in 742 is what a friend we have in Jesus. I think that'll include the faith of Jesus. We do have a friend in Jesus, and I welcome all those who are gathered here in, in person. person. We have quite a few folks that are gathered online. I certainly do understand, and I want to feel folks who want to be here and are in spirit and are not able to connect in other ways. Uh, so I guess it's fitting. I'm going to have a little bit of Star Wars and I begin and I'm going to promise Jesus Christ redeemed and loved you are rightly in God's love shines. So we are gathered, redeemed, forgiven. And, and gather together, together as, as the family of God through the grace of Jesus Christ. Thank, Thank you for, for, for coming, coming out. It's a privilege uh, to, to be together, together in part of this, this time congregation, this community, a time of, of shock, a time when we have to say goodbye and not maybe ready to, and, and also, also time to lean on each other and to celebrate the way that 
God pulls, pulls us together in love, love especially in unexpected, unexpected times and places. Um, and then you know, know that Greg's life was a zombie. And, and so uh, uh, our life blood, uh, some, some people, all others bring, bring the oxygen. oxygen. Uh, we, uh, we all start, start here with a breath and prayers. I invite you to join us as just as deep breath as deep as you can and hold it for a moment. And then we release the cares and concerns of the day into God's hands. Take a deep breath. We breathe in the presence of Jesus Christ who makes us as one. Release. We breathe in the Holy Spirit. We hold it, asking God to be with us in this time of worship and release. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us all in our sorrows. So we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Our gathering hymn, the words will be up on the screen if you don't have access to a hymn book. If you do have a hymn book, it's 574. Here I am. <clears throat> Thank you. 
I don't know if you can hear Greg laughing, but I make mistakes all the time, and I bet you he's laughing a lot. Uh, but I missed a couple verses. Um, I'm missing my tech guy an awful lot um, <laughs> since he's watching from a different vantage point, the heavenly one this time. So I apologize for the mistakes. Thank you for keep, uh, for your strong singing and for your profession of faith. I understand there is a time for everything. We're going to be hearing that in a moment. We're going to have the prayer of the day first, and then uh, Tracy's going to read for us. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Greg. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console all who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, readings begin with Ecclesiastes. The first reading is written in the third chapter of Ecclesiastes, beginning at the first verse. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to born, a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Here ends the first reading. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
So pretty hard to follow our quotes along. So thank you, Mary. And Joanne. Uh, actually, you don't have to do this alone. We're going to read with you. Okay. So uh, those of us uh, that are not leading are going to speak the bold portion of the song, and Jack will lead us in the, the print text. Okay. Okay. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, the Through its waters rage and foam, and through the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, a holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. Nations I moved and yours didn't. Right. How about this? Let's start there. Okay. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. <laughs> Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow 
and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Um, I am going to invite folks, uh, not quite glad, I'm going to try and give other folks a chance because I don't know that anyone will be able to speak after you. <laughs> uh, but if there is anyone who would like to, to share a story, I understand there's some cousin stories that maybe cannot be told, uh, but if there are other stories uh, that you would like to share, you can find the words for it. Uh, you're welcome to, to come up. If it's hard for you to stand, I'll bring the mic over to you, but if you can come up, that would be helpful. There are some folks that had stories that were not able to stay. I understand that uh, people have been traveling in lots of places too. So one of the stories is, as Susie comes forward, uh, we had an opportunity to, uh, as a congregation, we were trying to identify our guiding principles. So we had kind of a, a workshop uh, retreat kind of thing, uh, which included some minute to win at games. And uh, I know Wendy and, and Greg, if, if you know Wendy White and Greg Essenwine, are both pretty competitive folks. Um, yeah, see, if you know them well, you know that. Uh, and so Wendy and Greg took on the challenge of building a tower of Oreos with chopsticks. Yes. Uh, and it was it was kind of neck and neck for a while, and then Wendy took the lead, and she was going to win, and I swear it was the very last second, all of a sudden, Wendy's tower fell inexplicably in lots of different directions, and Greg had a big smile on his face, <laughs> and no cookies in his chopsticks. But for some reason, his chopsticks had gone and popped. Uh, <laughs> Wendy's tower right down, and Greg thought he could win. Uh, that way. Uh, I appreciate the way that Greg, sometimes a little bit naughty, um, but had a way of, of making us laugh and keeping us on our toes. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Those who don't know, I was a very good close friend of Greg for the last three years of his life. Um, I knew him before then as a child growing up in, in their shadows. And I say in their shadows because it was the s and the Humes, and the Hefners. These all were people who I looked up to through church years and everything. Um, there were th there was many of these gatherings that he, he even though he wasn't a, a counselor or the advisor anymore, he would come and participate in those things once in a while when he could through the years. Um, I do remember when him and Stacy took upon their the the catechumen classes and all that. So I do I wasn't one of the kids that were taught by him, but thank goodness I wasn't because I have a learning problem so as it is. So he would really screw me up if I was <laughs> so um but he really did appreciate dogs in his life. He appreciated Snickers whenever you called him for to get to watch Snickers for you. He really appreciated every time when Magic would come and see him because he would, even here at church, I have to watch it now because Magic, he would run through the whole entire church before I would even get halfway through the church to get to Greg. So now he, he notices that something is wrong when the doors are still closed when we come to church. But he still, magic was a big deal with both me and Greg. And I just, like I said before, I can't thank you very, as any more than just saying thank you for being here. I'm going to give the mic to you, Susie. 
I'm just going to say something quite I, But I want the folks online to be able to hear you too. And they, we love this so much. <laughs> My favorite thing is the microphone. <laughs> I was just going to say that we know Greg is a big man with a big personality and a big heart, and he's left a big hole in our congregation and in our hearts. And so, um, I this is you'll never hear this again. You've never heard it before. But in in Greg's honor, I would like to say, "Go Cowboys!" Oh. <laughs> You know, I, I thought stuff too. I actually were, yeah, I'm an Eagle fan too. I grew up in Philly. I actually worked with Cowboys College for a <laughs> So let's see, it won't happen again. Sometimes <laughs> love makes us do the dumbest things. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I love Greg so much. I never miss a chance to hug you and say, I love you just as Jesus loves us all. And Heavenly Father, I don't know if, if Greg can hear me say this, but I will miss those hugs. But someday, I will be in heaven too. Hello everyone, my name is William Lash, one of the roommates um, at 133 Chestnut Street. When I moved there, I just got out of prison. Um, and one of the funniest moments I possibly had was when I was when I got the approval to have parents. <laughs> and there was a moment where I had to go down to Florida and he's like, I'll watch it for you. Okay. I went down there for about a week and everything, and I called him and like, how's everything going? He said, uh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> They're running all over the place. <laughs> he said, they keep escaping out of places, they keep getting admired, whatever. They're going all over the place. I'm like, how much of a mess do I have to come back to? I get back home, and uh, well, you know, he did his best. <laughs> I will give him credit. There was three credits. Um, they took control of the pots and pans <laughs> um, and made a huge mess in my room. But let me just say, I spent an hour and a half cleaning. But I will say, he had love for them ferrets, even when he accidentally closed the door on one. <laughs> uh, it got a little paw, but when he heard her scream, scream he opened the door really quickly and said, Sorry. <laughs> and that man. He was more like a father figure than me. Um, he helped me with my mental health um, since I had, I had autism and schizophrenia. And he was just there for me so I could talk to him about anything that I was going through. Uh, but I appreciate everyone showing up. And thank you for giving me the time to speak to Thanks for being the kind of roommate that you guys are. Very kind of way to make people think. Jay. I didn't know Greg very well, like we all do, but every time I walked to the door, he always made me feel welcome. Jay, you have a way of using a couple words to just get to the heart of what needs to be said. I should probably explain too, there's stuffed animals in our sanctuary on purpose. Uh, the stuffed animals uh, remind us of people that have died and gone before us. And so there are uh, names on some of the stuffed animals and some of them we which is kind of know because we hang out with them. Uh, we recognize as we worship that we worship of the whole community of saints from the communion, we have communion with the whole community of saints. Uh, Greg introduced us to the fuzzy bear up here, uh, and this is going to be our buddy Greg. Uh, we'll keep reminding us that he's with us, uh, just with those welcomes. I'm going to read this too. This is not the end of the sharing. If you'd like to share, that's fine. I'm going to read this uh, for Tim Q. 
As y'all know, this is not easy. I've known Greg for many years, actually my entire life. For many, and I mean many years, on a Sunday morning, you always would find in the first pew, the human family, my father, mother, Todd, and I. The second pew would be Mr. and Mrs. Bad, Greg's grandparents, Otto, Joyce, Greg, Glenn. And everyone knew not to sit there. Evidently, we didn't get the memo. <laughs> Uh, I think we do things a little differently. All are welcome. You can sit wherever it works for you. Uh, you always knew when Greg entered the church, his loud voice and laugh could be heard throughout the entire church. We both belonged to the same youth groups and clubs, including youth group and a Bible school and many more. We were both very supportive of each other through the years. He was a very good friend and will be a sad this. At this point, Glenn, are you ready to read? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. The second reading is written in the eighth chapter of Romans, beginning at the thirty first verse. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God to elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, and who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted for as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things yet to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the second week. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today to show their respect for Greg and to show the support for the family. Also, all of you on Zoom out there, thanks for joining. Um, one of the enlightening things to me was when I was in the reception line in here was to hear how much of a big brother Greg was for a lot of people other than me and how he was a father figure to some. It was very heartwarming to hear that. But wow. Wow. Um, what a shock. Quite a surprise to get that call that Greg had passed. But in truth, I wouldn't have expected anything else, right? Because Greg always did have a little bit of a flair for being mad, right? <laughs> to be fair, Greg hadn't been in the best of health, especially for the past several years, but still, I certainly didn't expect him to leave us quite so soon. When the reality of this fancy hit me, a flood of memories ran through my mind. Some of my most fond memories of Greg are from our childhood. For those of you who aren't familiar with where Greg and I grew up, it was quite a rural area. Um, so we had like, you know, three neighbors with kids within a five to 10 minute walk each way from our house. Ellison's on the left, Swallows, and Beckles on the right. So Greg and I ended up having a lot of brother-on-brother -brother playtime together. <laughs> um, and for those of you who didn't know Greg 50 plus years ago, you could actually ride a bike, play some sports, not too well, and climb into a treehouse. Yeah, I'm, I'm not kidding, he could do those things. Uh, 
Our property was surrounded by a tree nursery with a creek and a pond. So many Saturdays we would ride our bikes on the pass in the nursery and go exploring all day, going over the creek, finding see what we could find. In the winter, when winters we actually did have some snow, we'd be sledding down the hill next to our house, holding a snow fort, or attempting to skate in the, on the pond in the nursery. I was frozen. When inside, we would play with matchbox cars, the original G.I. Joe, Big Jim, Lincoln Logs, Port Apache, and tons of other toys. Of course, like brothers do, we would also fight at times. And I gotta be honest with you, I was always pretty good at setting Greg up to take the fall. <laughs> uh, if we were outside, I would usually climb up to the top of the tree and call for mom to so, mom, Greg, uh, hitting me. Yeah. Um, although Greg, you know, could climb into our treehouse for it, <clears throat> he was always still afraid of heights. And so I would just go up a tree because I could climb like a squirrel. And uh, I would just go up high enough to stay out of his reach and taunt him and then uh, call mom. On Saturday mornings, we watched cartoons and movies on TV in the afternoons when it was raining outside. At night, you know, we stay up with dad, <clears throat> watch westerns, detective shows like Harry Mason, Night Stalker, and so we had to go to bed. And Sunday nights, gather and watch Wonderful World of Disney. Remember that? All those memories come rushing back. Then <clears throat> Greg went to junior high school. <laughs> His path shifted a little. Not that it was a bad thing, it was just a change of life for him. He started reading a lot. That man could finish a book before I could read the title. Um, he just read and read and read. That's the thing, Greg was always very smart. He just never really fully applied himself. Then he got an Atari and we played Pong, all right? Simple game, Pong going back and forth. And then Mattel handheld electronic games. And that's sort of like when Greg's electronic world just opened up and blossomed for him. And he came, you know, he can be much more of an indoors type of person while I still, you know, migrated and stayed outside doing things. It was also about that time that uh, Greg developed these uh, what I'll call phantom allergies. I swear he did, just so he didn't have to go on the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Greg's first real job was at Hannah Shoes, and uh, that's when he entered the world of retail. And he liked it, he really did. Because he could meet and meet people all day and talk to them. Uh, if you were walking by his store in the Berkshire Mall, he'd always yell out and greet you with a big smile and a handshake. He didn't hug, you know, people he didn't know right away, right? <laughs> just <laughs> took their hands. I swear, sometimes people will still go to the other side of the mall just to avoid going past. <laughs> I know Mike did, and Todd. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, he went to Johnson Murphy Electronics Boutique and paid jewelers before realizing that, that yeah, I think real detail, details are tough to get. That's when he went into the banking industry and actually met a lot of you who are here today. He started out as tech support and ran up in residential <laughs> mortgage refinancing and you know, until the rates went back up and that whole market slowed down. His latest, latest claim to fame was flea marketing, buying items on apps like whatnot and, and reselling them. Of course, he was always helping out here at the church as a technical assistant for broadcasting the services on social media. And you know, he really liked and enjoyed doing that. Throughout it all, and we heard a little bit here earlier, family was always very important to Greg. Whether it was his actual family, his work family, or his church family. He loved his family, and all he really wanted in return was to be loved back. He just had a weird way of showing and asking for it. We had many precious moments as a family growing up, being at our grandparents, attending family gatherings, hosting holiday gatherings and summer picnics, the list goes on. He also thought the world of Ty and Katie, and was always so very proud of them. In his later years, Greg's work family became very important to him as well. After all, he did spend a lot of time with them, and he developed a number of new friendships through, through work. Throughout it all, from kid to adult, the church family was always very important to Greg. It was a constant that kept welcoming him and loving him, despite him being loud and boisterous, and sometimes embarrassing. <coughs> Every Sunday, we would be here for church and Sunday school and attended youth group like clockwork. The church and our faith was always a keystone in our family. Greg was so proud to be able to help the church by broadcasting the services. And he would often text me pictures of the events here and just 
other general updates, uh, trying to keep me in the loop of what was going on here. I think for those of us that really knew Greg, we could put aside some of those moments with his attitude, shake our head, move on, because inside we knew he had a big old heart of gold and he would help anyone if needed. Greg could easily be an antagonist when he wanted to, which is why I'm definitely sure he became a Cowboys fan because he didn't know anything about football. <laughs> I don't think he even need three cowboy players. <laughs> but he also had a fun sense of computational humor to be enjoyably combative and to make you feel welcome and loved at the drop of a hat. Of course, he was always ready to give you a big smile and a big old hug. I love you, brother. And I'll miss you. Now, you can be reunited with mom and dad, and God's help. And you'll be fine until I see you again. Now we'll try and sing. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Gospels from John the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Hello and welcome. Here it's not uncommon to have a hello combined with open arms, like a picture of Jesus on the screen, and, and maybe even a hug. You might expect me to say that this is a great thing. And it is, that's true. But it's not just a great thing. Greg learned this from others. He learned welcome from his parents, Joyce and Otto, and Marianne, her members were over the moon when Greg was adopted. But it was not just a Joyce and Otto thing. It's a Jesus thing. Hello and welcome. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Not the awkward handshake kind of welcome or the fist bump or a stiff, polite bow. The welcome of Jesus is a full, bare hug. A rib squeezing. The table is set. There's a place for you kind of welcome. Uh, your favorite coffee is steaming in a mug at your spot kind of hospitality. We just heard Jesus has already gone to prepare a place for you. He promises his disciples even before his crucifixion. A place, Jesus tells his disciples, for all people. Disciples who are related by blood and by race. Disciples who are related through laws. Disciples who are adopted into the family for all time. St. Paul later wrote in his letter to the Ephesians, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, Christ destined us for adoption as children of God through Christ, according to the good pleasures of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he's made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Jesus has adopted us all into the family of God. All are welcome. It's a Jesus thing. And as St. Paul also reminds us, we do not earn this welcome. Imperfect people whose lives are a mix of good and bad, 
sometimes intentional, sometimes unintentional. People who sometimes love deeply and unconditionally and sometimes do not. People who give their last two copper pennies and sometimes do not. People who pay attention to the smallest detail and those who do not. Like all of us, Greg could fall into both of these categories each time. And Jesus meets us just where we are, meeting us with the intention of being our adopted sibling, making us welcome as one in the family of God. So welcome. It's a Jesus thing, reflected by Otto and Joyce in choir and teaching and worship and leading into their home and around their table with Greg and Glenn. Welcome. It's a Jesus thing reflected by teenage youth groups that we heard about today. Welcome. It's a Jesus thing, reflected at work, no matter where that work was, or at home, no matter where that home was. Welcome. It's a Jesus thing, reflected by Greg and Stacy to youth and young adults, mentored through play, crafting your trips. Welcome. It's a Jesus thing. In leadership as mutual ministry, guiding the congregation and hearing God's call and shaping ministry, getting us online, and yes, sometimes to tear, tearing down cookie towers. Welcome. It's a Jesus thing. Reflected by Greg and Susie and Matt, who are the first ones here at worship, making sure all who enter in person and virtually know it's a place that has been prepared for them, complete with sacred music like the Beatles or Stanley Jabari or anybody that is calling together in Jesus' name. Welcome. It's literally a bear hunt kind of welcome. It's a Jesus thing. Today we take solace in the ultimate welcome. The welcome that Greg has now received, redeemed and forgiven through grace by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And until we get that kind of ultimate welcome, May we continue to reflect the hospitality and welcome of Jesus Christ until that day when, as we heard, we receive that final bear hug and welcome to the place that Jesus prepared for us in his Father's house, our Father's heavenly house. Thanks be to God. I'll be to be safe if you have a red hill area. <laughs> Uh, the hymn is 685. <laughs> Join me as together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered at the Mount of God, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He is sent to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your life and your peace. God of mercy. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy. Give courage and faith to all who mourn. And assure and certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy. Yeah. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage, who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, yeah. help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please pray with me together if you're comfortable as Jesus called. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Well, for those who can see the screen, you might not be able to read the caption. This is a Gregism for sure. It's a chipmunk with a big old something yummy in its cheek. And it says, when you've already started eating and somebody says, let's pray. <laughs> That's actually a nice touch. I'm glad it's a good word to me. Please join me as we commend Greg to our Savior's care. <clears throat> we commend Greg Otto Essenwine to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Greg Otto Essenwine. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all your saints in life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We will take a moment to enjoy the postlude is one that I Craig enjoyed it. It's from the internet, so we'll take a minute uh, to play that. But please also know um, that all are invited as we do a final committal uh, at the cemetery uh, following the service. <laughs> I would have forgotten. <laughs> Heaven has six letters. Coffee has six letters. There is no coincidence. <laughs> it was something Greg said. <laughs> exactly. We, uh, 
Amanda and Greg work really well together. And so Amanda was able to, to pull many of those things off on Facebook. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you again. Why'd you have to leave so soon? Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to go? Why'd you have to leave me when I needed you the most? Cause I don't really know how to tell you without feeling much worse. I know you're in a better place, but it's always gonna hurt. Carry on. Give me all the strength I need to carry on. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. When I see you Feeling so cold I'll be waiting right here for you Till the day you're home Carry on Thank you. Thank you. Here. Thank you for your prayer and your presence. May God continue to provide comfort and love. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, Thank you God.
Brianna, it looks like Brianna is still on actually. Anyway, thank you. That was really good. Thank you, Rebecca. Nice meeting you. Thank you, Rebecca. Brianna, I'll turn you around. I'm not sure if folks can talk to you or not. Yeah. 